The question is, can you have other diagnoses with microvascular? Of course you can. That's why coronary function testing cannot be completed or finished unless you do acetylcholine vasospastic testing. The reason for that, because you could have epicardial vasospastic angina, you could have microvascular um, spastic angina, or you could have microvascular dysfunction, structural. So the, the, is it one size fit all? If you're lucky, that would be great. If you do your acetylcholine, you do your pressure wire eggs, and you get good values, then you will have an, a, a, um, a clear diagnosis and very accurate diagnosis. Patients could have both, could have neither, could have one of them, so either. So, so um, um, it's very important. If I get the diagnosis, do I move with treatment right away? Is it something that I could recommend treatment um, based on measurements I received? Of course you can. And that's what the CORMICA trial had studied. Cormica was very clear saying giving a diagnosis is part of the treatment and also told us that vasospastic angina should be treated with predominantly calcium channel blockers and long acting nitrates and also told us that microvascular dysfunction should be treated differently without the need for long acting nitrates because nitrates do not work on the microvasculature. Nitrates work on epicardial and um, coronaries, they are endothelin independent. So um, microvascular will require beta blockers, calcium uh, channel blockers, um, uh, rolanazine, uh, other medications that you could find in the Cormica trial. Are we testing other drugs? Yes, it's part of future trials. Warrior trial is one of them, using um, ACE inhibitors or ARB with high dose statins to see if that will alter the, the treatment but I definitely use the parameters that I obtained the measurements towards my treatment options.